What's up guys, Jalen from JPhotos here and I made a purchase. On June 21st, 2022, I picked up a Canon EOS R and I'm here to give you my impressions on it, review it, and tell you who it's for. Let's roll the intro. The Canon EOS R is a full frame mirrorless camera. Unveiled until October 2018, the $1900 EOS R do not show its age out in the field. The EOS R is Canon's camera that has RF mount capabilities with the new lenses. With the RF mount, it gives you a control ring. Canon's control ring can change any of your significant settings with the turn of a dial. For example, ISO shutter speed and aperture. In photo mode, this DSLR will provide you with a CMOS 30.3 megapixel sensor and a 3.2 inch display with a resolution of 2 million and 100 pixels. The EOS R is also equipped with an electronic viewfinder, so you can view your photos and videos through the viewfinder. In video mode, this EOS R will give you a resolution of a crisp 4K RAW and JPEG with 5,655 points of autofocus, an ISO range of 100 through 4,000, 40,000, I mean, whoa, that's a big number, and a max shutter speed of 1 8,000th 8, of a second, and a battery life of 350 photos. And that's the EOS R. So the EOS R is used for many things, mainly it's used for um, landscape, portraits, vacation photos, macro photography, and notice this. Notice how I didn't say weddings. The EOS R, in my personal opinion, is not very efficient on weddings because it doesn't have the dual SD card. And if I was going to do a wedding, I would recommend the Canon EOS R5. But if you have an EOS R and you're going to do a wedding, I'll recommend you getting a Canon battery grip, which is kind of Fairly, it's fairly expensive, especially with getting the batteries as well, but that's the use as well. All right, now it's time for the pros and the cons. Let's start off with the pros, because the pros is always the best part to start off with. If you don't know that, well, you know that now. Number one, the screen on top. The screen on top of the Canon EOS R is useful for me personally because I can see my settings, especially if I'm at an awkward angle where I can't view the camera screen. I can just look down at the screen on top and it'll show me everything that I'm needing. Also, if you're charging the camera through the USB-C port on the side, it will show you the battery percentage as well. Right, and pro number two, the mode dial. The mode dial is useful for me in two ways, one for changing the mode and another one for changing my aperture. The mode dial can be changed to change any significant setting like the ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. And as I said earlier, mine is um, the aperture. Also, the mode dial is kind of like the control ring, but just smaller and closer to you. Pro number three, the record button on the top. The core button on the top is useful for me especially because whenever I'm at an event, I can just press the record button and it just starts recording as soon as I press it. Also, I just press the button again and it ends the recording and that's it. So if I'm ever like in a situation where let's say I'm taking a family photos and the baby is smiling, just press the record button. I just got a video of the baby smiling. Is that so number four, the RF mount. Without the RF mount, I wouldn't be able to use my control ring. With my control ring, it changes my ISO, and my ISO is something you need to change rather quickly if you're into if you're into photography. And without the control ring, I will be able to change my ISO that quickly. So without the RF mount, I can't use the control ring. So that's the now it's time for the cons. This cons list took forever and a lot of thinking because this camera is so close to perfect. It is so hard to find the imperfections of it. But you know, as they say, nothing is perfect. So. The first con is very minor and easy to fix, and that is the battery. The battery, it is so slow, and you can only get 350 photos off of one charge. It takes two hours and 30 minutes to charge. With that, you will end up purchasing the battery grip with two extra batteries for the battery grip. That's $200 right there. And this camera don't equal my medium. So my medium is, have a long battery life and take a long time to charge, or have a short battery life and take a short time to charge. Con number two, the low light performance. The Canon EOS R low light performance isn't as good as its brothers, the R5 and R6. When the ISO is higher, I know it's gonna get noisier, but with the R5, with the same ISO, it has significantly less noise. And even though it has a 45 megapixel camera, I believe the EOS R does have the potential to catch up with it.
And that is all the Canon EOS R is recommended to whom? The Canon EOS R is definitely a professional camera and it's not meant for anyone and everyone. But I would rec recommend this camera to photographers that have been into photography for at least two to three years and is committed to photography. Because $1,900, it is a lot of money for a camera. It's a great camera for someone who is still growing their business. Now, I wouldn't recommend it for a sports photographer or the average person who wants to take photos of their kids <clears throat> a mother <laughs> i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend this camera to people who have photography as their hobby the cameras i would recommend if you don't fit in this recommended list is the canon rp starting at 859 dollars or the canon r10 which starts at 869 dollars right, thank you for watching everyone please hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't already hit the like button while you're down there too and wait scroll back up here i'm not done all right <laughs> and if you find this video helpful please send it to your friends they'll know too and that's it